Let's go to the Garden of Eden for a second. There's this period of time in one of the accounts of creation where Adam is created before Eve. Ladies, this is not because you're some type of like afterthought, but really because there's a hierarchy in the order of creation according to the order of beauty. And women were created last because you are most beautiful. Eve is referred to as the crown of creation. But Adam being created in, the, in this time alone in the garden is a heritage we all can share, man and woman. And we can kind of feel it as an echo in our hearts. There's this period of, of time where Adam's around all these animals, yet he knows that he's alone. Isn't that interesting? He's never seen another human being before, yet he knows instinctively in his heart, I'm alone here. It's like Adam is having a conversation with goat and he's just speaking to goat and he's like, hey goat, this is what's going on, man. Like I've got all these weeds to till and uh, I'm, I've got like 55 animals to name yet. I'm getting tired of thinking about names and I'm just really like anxious about where I'm at in my life. Do you, do you know goat? Do you understand me? And goat looks up at Adam with his big goat eyes and he just goes, bah. Adam is trying to have a heart to heart with goat and it's just not working. Adam is, is longing to see someone. First, he, he's longing to see someone seeing into him. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever just wanted to be seen? Have you ever just wanted to be seen by someone? We live in a very fast paced world. A lot of, lot of technology, busy stuff, all good, not knocking any of that. Sometimes we're longing for someone to just actually look at us. I remember I was in high school, I, was, I would be so busy, I'd go to school and do extracurricular stuff and then go hang out with friends and at the end of the day there would sometimes be this sinking feeling, this deep feeling in my heart that was like, I wonder if anybody actually knows the real me. Do you ever feel that way? Jesus sees you. Jesus sees us, he reaches into our solitude and he says, I love you. I see everything that you are and I love you. I was at the hospital, I do Eucharistic ministry for the hospital near where I live and I went to go visit this patient and I'm, I'm gonna be real honest, I was totally grossed out. This person was in intensive care, they had a whole bunch of machines, a very mangled body, the smells were very bad in the room and I just, I, I was afraid and I left. I was afraid, I was a coward and I left. Thank God the next day I went back into the room and I spent some time with this woman. And there was a point where I was, I was close to her and just praying a little bit and then we exchanged this eye contact. I started looking into her and as I, as I look into her eyes, I, I watch and her, she just starts crying. Just tears starts pouring out of her eyes as I'm looking at her. And I realize Jesus is looking at her and she's She's being seen. She's responding to someone seeing her in, in the moment of her greatest weakness. Jesus wants to look at us and is not afraid of what he sees. He's not afraid to look at you in your shame, in your weakness, and he's not afraid to reach out to you where you feel most alone and in solitude. You are not made for solitude. You are made for love and communion.